Here's another example of how to use planned ignoring, and this has to do more with in conversations. And this happens, we have folks who like to ask the same question a lot, or what did we have for dinner last night? We've answered the question, or we've, we've given the direction enough times and we want to put a limit on how much more we're going to engage about it. Hey, Jerry. Yes? Can I get another dog? I really want another dog. I thought you had a dog. Well, I do, but it seems like mom always hangs out with my dog. Oh, so your mom takes, you want a dog that you can take care of. I thought you were going to take care of the dog you had. But mom always takes care of the dog we have. Hmm. We have a uh, room for one dog at our house and i think that you have room for one dog at your house i think the answer about a new dog is going to be no but jerry yeah can i please get another dog well the answer this time needs to be no about the dog but why i'm done talking about a dog i'll be happy to talk to you about something else but i'm not going to talk to you about a dog but I really... hey jerry can i please get another dog Yeah. Okay. Can you talk about that dog, please? So what are we doing today? Hey, well, for lunch we were going to have um, smart ones, angel hair pasta. You ready? Okay, well, let's make lunch. Wait, wait, wait. For the demonstration of that, the, the key is that once I've said I'm done talking about something, that I really kind of have to bite my tongue, be done talking about it until a new subject comes up. With planned ignoring, the key is not to ignore the person, but to ignore the behavior that we talked about happening. In this case, it was talking about the dog. As soon as that behavior changed to talking about lunch, I'm re-engaged. I have to be paying attention to the person to know when to re-engage. Remember, planned ignoring is about the behavior, not the person. Thanks for what you do for the people that we serve.